Hi guys and welcome to this new tutorial of Blender and Geometry Notes. Today I'm going to show you how to create a fully procedural cutting with only Geometry Notes system and no cloth system simulation. Let's get started. I'm working with the Blender version 3.5.0 and uh, go here to the plus button, general and geometry nodes, add a simple plane, shift A, mesh plane is a good choice. Click here to create a new geometry nodes modifier and the concept behind this project is starting to make a simple grid and the main point of this concept is to maintain the UV map of this grid for all the workflow of the modifier. Uh, this because it's very important to maintain this UV map balance to be able to manage in a correct and better way the color and the texture and whatever you want in the shading editor. So first of all we are going to create a simple grid, a base grid and because we want to use uh, this cutting in a vertical direction we can uh, position our point of view with one to see better the 3d space leaving the z-axis up so we can add a simple grid it's obvious we are going to add uh, a parameter to define the number of vertices of this uh, grid in our group input so we can start to add uh, some attributes like like uh, the float number of the width of our curtain from zero another for the height of our curtain the integer resolution value to define what vertices we want in this grid depending on your performance pc and the detail that you want to assign to this grid we can rename it in resolution from a minimum value of three and we can start to make this big grid so we can connect the resolution in the vertices and link these to the vertices in the Y space. Next, if I press Shift, Control and click, we can see that our grid, if I press F and increase the width to 1 and height to 1 and the resolution to 32, for example, you can see the grid is in the space in the X and Y space, but we want to have this in the space of Z and X. So to do this, we need to rotate this grid and we want also to move these to leave the origin point here. Here. So we need to shift the grid on the X axis by the width divided by 2 and on the Y direction always by the height divided by 2. So I can use a transform geometry in between here. I can drop this by Ctrl X to see the result here. I can add a combine XYZ node and link this to the translation socket. We need to divide the width by 2 and link this to the X, the same for the Y value. So I can link the height here and link this to the Y. Next we want to rotate this geometry and keep in mind that it's important to use another transform geometry otherwise uh, Blender starts to merge the uh, behavior of the translation and rotation in the same node giving you uh, maybe a result that you don't want. And I can show you this if, because if I increase the rotation on the X axis it starts to rotate on the local origin point that is shifted in this point by the width divided by 2 and the y divided by 2 so the origin point is here in this moment inside this node so to make a better result we need a new transformer geometry click here to enable this nap tool to the grid and we can add a simple rotation of 90 degrees on the x axis that is the global axis of the coordinate system so this axis now if i press shift z you can see the grid definition in the wireframe mode we need to link the width in the size x and the height in the size y but you can see this uh, bad result if i increase the height you can see the stretching of uh, the single faces and we don't want this we want to maintain a balance a square face shape for all these grid and to do this we need a proportional multiplication from the resolution that we have here by the value of the width and height so if i set to height we want to we need 
need to multiply the resolution by two for the vertical direction to maintain the, the shape of a square for all these faces. To do this, we need a simple method. We need to multiply the resolution by the width here and link this to the size and link this to the vertices of the X and the same approach linking the resolution in one socket and the height in the other socket and link this to the vertices Y and now if I press H and H to collapse these two nodes we can see that if I increase or decrease the height I maintain the correct proportional shape of each face of our grid now we can press H to collapse the, this uh, combine XYZ, select all these nodes, Ctrl J, F2, base, grid, and this is the initial part of our grid. Um, I will execute this operation because I don't want to forget it. We need to export the UV map of this grid immediately in the group output socket to give it a name that we will use in the shading editor. I can give it a name like UV map with the M in a lower case and this is our curtain now next step we need to, to change the position of each of these points in the space along the y-axis to give a shape similar to a wave or sinusoidal shape so the idea is to make changing like this in the upper side and the same effect or increase the effect to the lower side and we are going to create a mixing from the upper side to the downside of this effect. We can start to change the upper side and to do this we need a new set position node here. Combine XYZ value and in the detail we want to maintain for the reading position socket we want to maintain the X and Z component for this position and we want to change only the Y axis of each point. We can press H, H to collapse these two nodes. We can select all these nodes, Ctrl J, F2, set the Y position and the effect that we are starting to add in this workflow we can call it uh, folding effect and to do this we need uh, some attributes uh, in the group input node. One will be the frequency of our waveform, the phase or the offset of these. So I don't want to start from this point but I want to start from a different point of this waveform and the amplitude of this uh, waveform. I can add a float number, fold up frac from zero, fold up offset and we can leave uh, negative and positive number because uh, it's possible. Another attribute fold up amplitude from zero and we can start from this. Save the project, it's important. Now to get the correct uh, waveform of these points we need uh, to get the x position of each point of this grid and uh, give it to the sign mathematical operation. So you can see we will get a different result of the sign operation for each of these x values of these points. So I can start with the position value. I can separate these in the three axes. I want to get the x information that starts from zero and from this I want to add the offset so we want to add an offset the shifting the phase of our waveform and to do this we need to add a group input node before we need the frequency value we need to multiply this x by the frequency of this folding to get a uh, more waves and next we need to add the offset next after adding the offset we need to calculate the sign mathematical function and then we can multiply these uh, values that goes uh, from uh, 1 to minus 1, you can remember the sign mathematical function, we need to multiply the result by the amplitude that we need to have more or less result in this grid. So with this multiply we have more or less frequency. With this add operation we have the starting point from here or here, okay? And with the sign we get the correct result of a sign mathematical function function from 1 to minus 1 and with this multiply we have a more or less amplitude 
of these values like this. I connect this fold up amplitude and now press H to all these nodes to better see the result. I move these a little bit because we are going to use the same separated values of this position also for the folding down part. Now I could link these multiply value to this Y operation, to this Y socket and now if I increase the amplitude and increase the upper frequency you can see our wave form starting to burn on our grid and you can see this is because we need a resolution parameter to better define our resolution to not have this bad result of this grid and to have a more smoothed cutting mesh. Now you can see we have this behavior not only for the upper side but also for the downside and we don't want these we want to have different attributes for the down part so I drop for a moment this line I can duplicate these nodes that I can move up I can duplicate the attributes so fold down frac from zero and I can move down the down offset and the fold down amplitude always from zero I can move this down and I can link these new values the frequency the offset and the amplitude here and link the same x value for this multiply node now that we have these uh, results we need to mix uh, together these uh, two values one to the upper side and one to the downside and to do this we can easily use uh, a mapped range before these i select all these nodes ctrl j f2 folding down these ctrl j f2 folding up it's not finished the work on these two sections but next we are going to add some additional attributes and nodes but for now we need to understand slowly the entire workflow now to mix together this behavior imagine that we have for the y axis our ramp a gradient values from 0 to 1 imagine this and if we have a graph like this from 0 to 1 we can easily use this ramp based by the y-axis of the position of each of these points on the grid the correct mapping result of our y movement that we calculated before so to do this we can easily add a new position node we can separate the vector in the x y and z and because we have not one for the highest uh, points of this grid but we have the height value here in the geometry modifier we need to remap the height value to a gradient from 0 to 1 and to do this is very easy we can add a map range and we can say the y value from 0 to not max 1 but uh, i need a group input to the from max height okay we need to remap this from 0 to 1 ctrl shift ctrl h h now that we have this uh, map range we can add another map range and we can say that if we have from 0 to 1 value we want to distribute what if we have the y values of these points we want to have the downside effect otherwise we want the upper side and because it's a linear proportional mixing values from this range to this range we can easily connect the y shifting value to the zero socket to the min socket here and the y of these to the maximum socket and doing this operation we can easily have a linear gradient of values from this output to this output based by the y information of the position of each point on our grid i can easily create a dot to simplify my workflow and understand in a better way in the meantime in the middle of these uh, two nodes we can easily add a float curve if you want to manage uh, in a detailed way the ramp the linear map uh, ramp from 0 to 1 to have a different effect uh, on our grid it would be nice if we would have uh, uh, this float value directly in this uh, geometry modifier i hope the team of blender will add this feature in the next version of blender and now that we have this result we can connect these to the 
Y socket of the combined XYZ. We can select all these nodes, Ctrl J F2, mix folding, converting height in ramp from 0 to 1. Now if I increase the upper amplitude, sorry I, I don't know why I, I say the Y direction uh, in all these sections, I mean the Z component, okay? And uh, now we can see the effect. Now if I press the Shift Z we can see the mesh and we can see that if I increase or decrease the frequency of these uh, values for the upper side or the downside we can increase the ampli amplitude of the downside we can add a new frequency values and you can see the perfect job of the map range uh, node we can uh, increase the resolution if you want for a moment and we can uh, use this offset to offset this waveform in the upper side is very useful if you have a stick with the holes that we are going to create next and to maintain the a correct initial part of the mesh in the top part and in the bottom part. I can increase the offset also for the bottom part. You can animate this value. Now as described before these sections are not finished because uh, we can add other attributes here before going further and you can see if I decrease the width of this curtain you can see we lost the shape of the waveform and uh, if we want to maintain the total mesh with these parameters and stretch the mesh if we increase or decrease the width we can easily do it adding a new attribute in the group output node after the resolution for example we can add a boolean attribute like relative frequency and we can use these here because like before for the vertices definition of the grid we multiplied the resolution by the width and the height to get the correct number of the vertices of the grid and in this case we need to multiply what the frequency by the width to maintain the proportional frequency in the space on our curtain so if we have a switch node here we want to use a flow value link the relative frequency here and you can see this if i decrease to half the width we will need double frequency to have the same number of the waves so in this case if i have one width and we have one two three and four waves if i have 0 0.5 we need to multiply by two this number to get the same number of the waves so if i decrease this value i need to increase this value by the same factor and to do this we need a, an inverse behavior of the proportion so to do this we need to get uh, the folding down frequency for example we are going to use the same uh, approach also for the upper side and after the multiplying mathematical operation with the separated x values we need to divide and not multiply this value by what so if the relative frequency is on, we need to divide by the width itself to get the correct inverted proportional behavior. And we can link these here before the adding of the offset. Otherwise, we want to maintain the division operation by one. The same approach here for this folding up section. So we can select this node, Shift D, Alt P to exit from this section, G to move inside this section, G to move a little bit, and we can set if the relative frequency is on, I want to use the width value and divide what the result of this multiply by the width and use these in the socket of the adding mathematical operation. We can move this node a little bit, perfect, and now we can see if this relative frac is off, we have the same result as before. So the same frequency, even if I increase or decrease the width. If I set one, for example, to start with a unit value, if I set the relative frac, if I decrease the width, the frequency starts to change, maintaining the correct proportional values to always get the same number of the waves that we need. And this is very useful when you are starting to open two curtains, okay, or close the curtains. Now I can set the one and two meter 
for example in this case i don't know if i have a meter in this case i can check this unit i have a millimeter but i can set meters it's the same save the project to have a realistic scale of our, our cutting next step i'm sure you have seen in your life a double folding effect on a cutting so you can imagine this shape that is the easy way to have the waveform the simple shape is this but i'm sure you have seen a shape like this for example this stretching cutting effect and we can simulate this in a, an easy mathematical way so imagine that we overlap these two waveforms one is this and one is the other okay so the result that we need to get you can see this we have the y axis in this direction and we have x axis in this direction we always need to maintain the uv map of the entire shape and uh, it's very very important so we need to shift the original point uh, on our base shape to get the correct position here in the second waveform and you can see this particular difference of value we need to shift these here and these here now follow my thought here we have the sine mathematical function to shift these points uh, to the left uh, because we have a positive direction of the x in this direction we need to subtract from these points or this portion of these points a value of the x to go in the left direction but in this section so from here to here we need to add the same values to these points to get a right direction shifting here we have a subtraction values a mathematical operation to assign and here an adding operation and another thing that you can see is that in the starting section and the final section we have little shifting and in the middle we have the maximum influence of the shifting the same here 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 etc and you can draw this influence overlapping another form to these two wave forms so if i draw these like so it's not very easy to draw this and another time like so it's not so easy to see but you can see i have a waveform here that goes to positive values and negative values and you can see the maximum value of the green wave is here and the distance between this point to the zero value is the maximum influence that we can add to the medium point of the original wave to better see this effect in a zoomed version i will draw down here here we have the original shifting of our base waveform here we have the result that we need and this effort this influence is caused by this green waveform and this new wave and you can see this in this point we have no sign mathematical function mathematical result of this green wave so we have no influence to shift this point from this x this x to another x so we can add to this x value zero in this point we have an x x1 example and we want to add a factor multiplied by this point of the green waveform to to get a value to add to the x1 value so if we have a factor like uh, one in this maximum point maybe we have here a 0.6 value to add to the x1 but you can see in this case we don't need to add but subtract so we need to assign a minus mathematical operator to this formula and also here and uh, as a result we have this point shifted in this direction to get this new x point maintain the same y position next if we have this point that has its x to value we have a value like uh, maybe 0.9 influence on this green function so the result of this 
point is x2 minus 0.9 and so on. In this point we have another time a value below 1, maybe 0.8 for example, and you can see for this point this arrow is uh, uh, a bit smaller than this arrow. So we can get here x3 minus 0.8. Here we have no effort because here we have a zero value from this green mathematical function and here in this part because we have a minus value here we have a minus value on this green mathematical function so minus multiplied by minus value equal to positive so in this case we have for this value minus uh, for example 0 0.7 and we have the shifting like uh, x4 minus minus uh, 0 0.7 so x4 plus 0 0.7 and we have a positive shifting on the X axis, the same for the other points, etc. And you can see the green sine mathematical function follows exactly the same frequency of the original waveform multiplied by 2. You can see if I have an entire period of this original waveform in this space, we have two periods for the green mathematical function. Now, with this explanation, we can use this mathematical function multiplying these values by a factor that we want to increase or decrease the result effect of this double folding behavior. So, to do this, we need to duplicate the entire section of the single folding up and down so we can select all these nodes press shift D move down a little bit and we need to have the same initial frequency of the group input node so the fold down frequency and fold up frequency we also need the same relative frequency switching to have the correct proportional re-evaluation of this frequency we also need the adding of operation of the offset and then before the sine mathematical function because we want a double frequency here in the middle we need to multiply this value by 2 before going in the sine mathematical function and here we have the output of the green values but we don't want a multiplication factor with the amplitude we want to maintain a range between minus one and one the minimum influence and the maximum influence of this effect so we can drop this multiply and this is the result of the folding down for double folding effect the same approach here before the sign we can drop this multiply we can add a multiply node here in the middle multiplying this value by 2 and connecting here this result to the sign operation and this is the folding up for double folding effect. Now you can imagine the result of this sign is minus 1 and 1 as the ramp so in this case we uh, are using a unit of meters so in this case we would have uh, a shifting factor values by uh, 1 meter time and we don't want this so we need to decrease this value multiply by uh, an attribute that we can add on our group node system so to increase or decrease the effect so we start from this result from minus 1 to 1 next we want to add group input a new fold up double effect from zero a fold down double effect so i can rename it in down from zero here instead of using two height values of these two attributes we can divide the fold up by 100 the same for the folding down double and we can multiply these little values of the influence by the factor as a result of this sine equation so before this you can see this section is for the folding down and this is for the upper side and here we have the fold up value and the fold down value so we need to invert this section to better understand the workflow we can move these two attributes outside this section and we can press ctrl h here move this at the center and multiply this sign by the value of the influence of the folding up double 
effect, duplicate this multiply value and multiply this sign result by this fold down double effect. And as described before, we have influence in the top part and in the bottom part we could have a different values. So we need to mix together these values. And as described before, we need to use our remap values to have a good linear proportional distribution of this effect. So to do this, we can just select all these mix folding converting effect, shift D, we can move these down and link these value here and this value here. Press H here, H here. We can select all these nodes, Ctrl J, F2, double folding and the infinity shape influence. Now that we have the single value here, we need to add a set position because we want to offset and not repositioning the points, but only the offset on the x axis because we want to move these points in this direction by this calculated value. And we need to link the previous set position and this output to the main output of the group output node. We need a combine XYZ, link the vector to the offset. We don't want to move the Y and the Z, we only want to change the X value by this value here. And now we can select all these nodes, Ctrl J, F2, offset X for double folding. Now you can see if I increase the fold up double effect here, uh, we have the effect in the bottom part of the curtain and we don't want that. We want this effect up and to do this we have a problem here in the mix folding converting height in ramp from 0 to 1 in this section because if we have zero value for this map range from the Z effect we want the influence of the down part, so this part. Otherwise, if we have one, we want the upper part. So to do this, we can easily invert these two sockets or invert these two value of the map from 0 to 1 in a ramp from 1 to 0. And in this case, I have this effect. Now, I decrease a little bit this effect because it's too much. I turn it off with 0 and increase a little bit. And you can see this particular effect. We have a triangular waveform because we forgot to multiply the result of this effect by minus one. If you remember the, the explanation before, if I enable the annotation another time, this waveform follows the same starting point of the main sinusoidal waveform. And this influence is added and not subtracted. So we want to subtract this positive number and add these negative numbers. So to do this, we need to go here in this double folding infinity shape influence section. And here where I divide the value of the fold up double by 100, we can easily insert minus 100 to invert the sign of these values before going in this map range. And now if I increase the fold up, you can see a perfect double folding effect up. If I want to do the same down, I can increase this to the downside, but you can see a bad result in the middle. You can see this wrong part. The mixing node does a bad job in the middle. So to fix this problem, we need to smooth the effect with an influence of one here, one here and zero here with a linear decreasing from these points to these points and then with a Again, an increasing values from 0 to 1 from these points to these points. So we need an influence like uh, this. Influence of 1 here, influence of 0 here, and an influence again of 1 here. If I get one sequence of uh, indexes of points in a vertical di direction and draw the Z value in a graph, you can see here we have the index and here we have the Z and you can see I have a graph like this. So we need to normalize this value that is the height, the maximum height of the curtain. So we need to normalize these to get one. In this way we have values only from zero to one. Next we need to use a ping pong with a threshold 
of 0.5, a division by the 0.5 threshold itself to get original value of 1, because we want to have a ramp from 0 to 1 always. And next, we can invert with a simple map range the effect from 0 to 1 to a new ramp from 1 to 0. And then we can multiply these values, these influence from 0 to 1 with these result of double folding effect. So I move a little bit these offsetting because we need to add some nodes here in the middle. We can reuse this piece of nodes, so the position separated in XYZ and get the Z component remapped from this ramp 0 and height to 0 and 1 to get this normalized information. So before this map range we have this graph, after this map range we have this graph and we can link these to a ping pong with a threshold of 0.5, divide this value by 0.5, so in this first node we have this graph, and then dividing this by 0.5 itself, we multiply by 2 and we get the entire graph and then we can link these in a new map range node where we invert the input with the output from 0 to 1 to from 1 to 0. I move these a little bit, create a dot to better understand this layout and then we can multiply these by the result of our double folding effect and link these to the X of our offset. And you can see if I I disable for a moment this annotation and go here in the curtain, you can see that the effect starts uh, to disappear in the middle and if I decrease the effect down and up, we have a good result in, in the middle of our curtain. We can select all these nodes, Ctrl J F2, avoid double folding effect in the center in a smoothed way. Save the project. If you want to better understand the, the behavior of this ping pong node, I suggest you to watch my previous tutorial about rotating, scaling and positioning tilting on curves. You can watch this in the link in the description or here if you want. And next, the most cryptic part of this tutorial. Imagine that you want to move some part of the curtain in a direction. Okay, so you want to open the curtain but not all the curtain but only a partial part or hold a bottom part of the curtain with the a rope for example so we need to create an effect like this and how can we reproduce this effect so to do this effect we need two main things one is the point in height uh, where we want to start with this effect so we need to stretch the entire curtain points from this point so the maximum width value to zero to create the opening effect of the curtain so we need to have two attributes, the Z position and the X position. So instead to use absolute values from 0 to width or 0 to height, we are going to use a factor from 0 to 1 to remap the entire width and height between 0 and 1. So on the X, the factor will be from 0 to 1. And if I have 1, we have the entire curtain here. So this effect, so the original closed curtain and if I have 0.4 I have this shape for example and the other shape in between. We can start to add some new attributes in the group node. A float attribute as the open x factor from 0 to 1, another in the z axis from 0 to 1 and a belly effect we can have an effect like this if i have a zero effect i have this shape a sort of semi sinusoidal shape otherwise with a belly effect i want to have this effect so more belly shape. In this way you can simulate the elasticity of the curtain. So we can add another attribute, open belly from zero. The purpose behind uh, this uh, effect is to maintain always the UV map and the position on the Z axis of all the faces of our curtain and move only the X position of these. So we are going to stretch the entire points from this point to this point 
point and we are going to change only the x axis the x position of each point of our curtain now again we need to think in a way and as described in my previous tutorial if you have a big problem divide it in a sub problem so remember the divide tempera method to solve a problem like this so we can start to understand that we have the entire curtain and we can imagine a shape like this that starts from here and ends here and if you rotate these lines you can see a shape like this that is piece of a sinusoidal waveform and you can imagine this point and this point where can we get these values in a sinusoidal waveform you can remember the sine mathematical function we have zero here with the sine zero here and zero here this is an entire period from 0 to 2 multiplied by pi 360 degrees we have one period so we don't want to start with this range but we need to have a range limited from uh, pi divided by 2 and 3 pi divided by 2 so 1 2 3 times pi divided by 2 so to get this information that is in these axes uh, from 1 to minus one we need a map range we can use a new group input next we need to map what this open z factor from zero to one to zero and the entire height of this uh, curtain because we start with uh, a factor like uh, 0 and 1 okay the, this range but we want to distribute this range from 0 to 1 from 0 to the entire height of the curtain and next we need to have the actual position of each point separate the vector and we can select this node ctrl jf2 from 0 to 1 to 0 and height ctrl h we need the z component because i'll explain what we are doing we want to use this z value and remap this z value initially from 0 to the maximum height of the curtain and stretch this mapping from minus pi divided by 2 to pi divided by 2 and you can ask me why why do i set these values because you can think these you can see this range of pi divided by 2 and 3 divided by 2 from here to here but if you see this graph is this graph rotated in an anti-clockwise way so you can imagine that here we have a zero on the z-axis but with zero value of the z-axis we want in this graph minus one and to have minus one influence so this point of this graph we need to pass in the sine mathematical function this point and this point can be 3 pi divided by 2 or because this is a periodic function if i move the original point of the axis here we have minus pi divided by 2 and with this value i get the same value of 3 pi divided by 2 in the sine equation so this result of minus 1 and this is why here from me zero I want to get the limit of minus pi divided by 2 radiant for the maximum value of the z axis so the height value I want this value so 1 as the result of the sine function and to get this 1 we need to pass through the sine equation this point of the graph so pi divided by 2 and this is why I set here pi divided by 2 now we can pass through a sine mathematical function we didn't forget this section next because we want to have this effect of stretching with zero effort the zero influence if the points on the x has zero value on the x axis and one if the point has the x axis to the maximum width of the curtain so here in this point you can see this influence in this way zero influence here and maximum influence here we need to shift these result of the sine so from uh, minus one and one in a graph like this from zero to one and to do this because uh, from minus one and one there is two units uh, we need to 
divide the result of the sine by 2, so we can multiply by 0.5, and add 0.5 to offset the result. So with this multiply, I have this result from minus 0.5 to 0.5, and with this add, I have the shifting of the entire waveform. Now we need to change the position of the x with a set position new node here from position the actual position of our points on the curtains we can separate these and combine again link these to the position we want to maintain the same y and z because we want to maintain the same uv map of the entire cutting and we need to change only the x information now if i link these and link the output of the previous set position here and this output to the entire output of the workflow we can create a dot for the uv map okay we can link this result here and you can see this weird effect so we stretched all the points of the cutting following the sine equation and we don't want this, we want to distribute the influence by the x value of each point of the curtains. So the points that have a lower x need to have less stretching effect. And to do this, we need to get the position, the separated value of the x, and multiply this value of the x by the result of our effect and link this to the new x position. And you can see now. I have a complete stretching here and no stretching here because uh, I multiply the x as a factor by the result of our shape and now you can see if I increase the width we can have the same effect even I stretch the width the attribute now as described before we don't want a cutting like this we want to have uh, a minimum value of this sine equation not starting from zero Okay, but starting from a factor from 0 to 1 to have this result. This means that here, where we calculate the sign, multiply the values and add 0.5 to shift the entire graph, we don't want to start from 0 to 1, so you can see this graph from 0 to 1, but we want to start from a minimum value in a range between 0 to 1 here. And to do this is very easy to do because we can link this to a new map range node in between where we have 0 1 the result from here to here yes we could use uh, from a minus 1 and 1 dropping these uh, two nodes but i want to let you understand this i can press each h for this node g to move and here we can add a group input to link the minimum value of this open x factor so if we have the open x factor here not zero but i increase this factor you can see the distribution of the limits of the range between 0 to 1 for the sine equation and the stretching result not only these but we forgot this section you can remember this part because with this open z factor we can change the position not from 0 z axis and the maximum z axis so the height of the curtain so from here to here this sine waveform but we can link this result in the from mean to start not from zero but with a positive value and you can see we have here the starting point of our stretching effect because we changed the map range minimum value here to represent the sine equation it seems to be difficult but it isn't. I suggest you to watch multiple time uh, this part uh, to better understand the entire workflow. So I press Ctrl H to these. We can select all these nodes. Ctrl J F2 create sinusoidal range only on the vertical direction. Here we have Ctrl J F2 sinusoidal creation only in the horizontal 
direction because here we have the creation of the sine waveform and the remapping with the open x factor to have a limit distribution in a range like this so from here to here ctrl j f2 new smoothed exposition influence ctrl j2 node feature changing exposition okay it's not finished because uh, we need to add the belly part so imagine that instead of having this formula this equation this sign shape we want to have an effect like this with a belly effect and to create this shape we can imagine that we can mix this actual position of our points of the curtain and the original positioning of the curtain to mix these we can't use a linear value for each point otherwise we would have a shape like these for the entire curtain and this sucks it's obvious this is not what we want but we want a smoothed belly effect and to have this we need an influence that goes from 0 to 1 from here from this height to this height 0 influence here and 1 influence here and in between we want an influence in a not linear way but we could think to a shape like this for example so this point is one okay and this is zero where on this axis this is one and this is zero and you can see a shape like a parabolic equation so if you remember the x to the power of two this is the graph okay and if you rotate this part imagine that we have here what one and here we have one if you rotate this piece of graph you can get this piece of graph and if you use these for the mixing factor in a mix node between this actual position of the points and the original position of the points you can see this point will have the maximum mix factor so it would be here i add another layer to see the effect with a green and imagine that you have uh, all these points here and with the green layer i will draw the final position of each point so this point will go here this point here because uh, the factor is a uh, very height of the mixing this point a little bit near this point because uh, its value of the influence it's lower than the previous it will go here for example then these then these and less and always always less and you can see the starting making of a belly effect for the position and if i decrease the number of the exponent of the power of this equation i can get curve like this or this or this and with this exponent variation you can get a different shape of the belly effect now to do this we need a new map range from this point of the height of the curtain because we want only this range of values clamped it's obvious to not get negative values below zero or above one and to do this we need to duplicate all these section we can't use only one single map range because this point in our attribute is not an absolute value but it's a relative value is a factor from zero to one for the entire height so we need to transform from zero to one the factor of the open z factor so this point to have the correct absolute height respect the entire height of the curtain so we know that we have the opening z factor from 0 to 1 is equal to set a value from 0 to the maximum height in the absolute values in the 3d space after this from 0 to 1 to 0 and height we need to get the position of our curtain points we can link these together to get the the z value the actual z value of each point and remap this point from a minimum value of this absolute height so this point to the maximum of the entire height to a range between 0 and 1 and we have 
now a range between 0 and 1 from this point to this point in the z axis and we can call this section map the height to a portion in a range 0 to 1 influence and this is the influence of our belly effect so the first line of points will never change their position because the effort the factor of the influence will be always 0 and for the highest points the influence will be always one now that we have a range from zero to one imagine this graph okay where our x axis of uh, the graph is these okay remember this graph here in which this is the x and this is the y if you rotate this graph here we have the x and the y i include these in brackets because in a real space we don't have the x in this direction we have the z component in this direction but for the mathematical dot now we have a value of the x and we want to create the power of these values so we can pass these in a power node with an exponent to get the correct curve of this equation and because we have the open belly effect this will be our exponent but keep in mind that if we have zero we don't want any effect and this means that this graph needs to be similar to this graph here so zero values for all the points until the end so only the last row of points could have one for the mixing values and to get this type of equation we needed to increase the exponent to an infinity number and to do this we need to add a node a mathematical node with a divide operation when we need to divide one by the group input belly effect in this way if we have one divided by zero we have infinity and any number to the power of infinity will get the maximum stretched curve for our values this is one and this is is one so the influence for this is equal zero or near but because we need to avoid crashing by blender in any case uh, we need to add a switch node with a float number where when the opening belly is equal to zero and only in this case we want to get a result of zero effect zero mixing effect for all the points of the curtain also for these last row of the shape otherwise we can get the correct result for each point of the curtain and with this uh, workflow if we increase the belly so imagine that i have one for example you can get here one divided by one each point is to the power of one so we get in with this value this perfect linear equation because if we have a range here from zero to one in a linear way from this point to this point we will have the same linear mixing value as the result of our mixing operation if i set the open belly to 0.5 for example we have 1 divided by 0.5 equal 2 so the power is by 2 and this is the curve if i set here 0.25 i have the power of 4 if i set 2 i have the opposite effect so the square root and if i set 4 the curve will be these and with this difference of curves you can easily mix what the smoothed x position influence node for the opening factor behavior so this effect here and we can add a simple mix node in between where the first values are these effect here so the sign shape described before the second values are the original x position of the cutting so the position you can you can see the original position and the full opening position and to get a distributed mixing values between all these points we need to use these result here and now if i increase or decrease the value you can see more or less belly effect on our curtain if i increase a little bit you can see more more influence like this so each point is mixed in a more way to be similar the second values of this mix operation so the original 
x value of the curtain otherwise it will stay to the original opening position it's not perfect here i know uh, because uh, we have always uh, a value in this graph uh, above zero but for this problem we can use uh, next uh, a rope to hide this uh, effect a rope or uh, whatever object you want to add in this case now we can select this node ctrl j f2 mixed with the correct factor ctrl h to this node h h h and this switch can help us to have uh, a perfect zero values uh, of influence for all the points if the opening belly is zero so if i decrease to zero I have the original opening effect. We can select all these nodes, Ctrl J, F2, calculate, belly, influence, and voila. Now, next part. You can see this uh, cartoon is not very realistic, so to make more realistic uh, missing ironing effect, and to get this result we need to add uh, some noise on the top part and bottom part of this cartoon. So I now set 0 and 0 for the opening to see the entire curtain i decrease a little bit the amplitude of the upper side and the double effect on the upper side the same for the downside i increase a little bit the down frequency we have these we need some notes here and we can add a noise texture for the upper side we need more attributes here so we can add a group input we can set here not 3d but 4d because we could have a different seed for this effect so we can connect the w seed effect the scale and the detail we can rename it in noise up offset noise up scale and the noise up detail and another node with the noise up value so the entire effect of the noise in the top part and the same for the down part so i duplicate all these attributes the up is from zero it's obvious and down the same value the noise down offset the noise down scale and the noise down detail ctrl h g now as always uh, i suggest you to subtract uh, 0.5 for all the axes uh, to have a, a better behavior of the noise distribution on the 3d space starting from a cube from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 we can separate these x y and z values we can get a combined x y z we need to leave the x the y and leave the z offset to zero because we want to maintain the same z position of each point of our curtain next we want to scale this by the group input value of the noise up to have the correct factor scale for the entire effect we can duplicate these for the bottom part of the curtain but we need to select here not these attributes but the down offset the down scale down detail and here the noise down effect ctrl a Ctrl H, G to move. We can select all these nodes. Ctrl J, F2, noise up, down, influence. Now, as before, we need to mix the noise effect from the top to the bottom part with a linear distribution from 0 to 1. And to do this, we can easily select the previous mix folding converting height in ramp from 0 to 1. Use it before. We can select all these nodes, Shift D, and we can move it here you could create a subgroup if you want to reuse these uh, notes because we have three cases one here one here and one here for this purpose and we can press ctrl h here ctrl h and link the upper part to the min values of these and these to the max but it's wrong in this case these because we have a vector of the three components here and here we have a unique float number so we don't need to have a map range of a float we need a map range of vector so we need to link these to the mixing values for all the three components from this range to this range so this mixing effect is correct but we need to link this vector to a vector this vector to this vector we can drop this dot create some dot to understand in a better way the layout and because i remember you that the zero points so the bottom part is here and 
and one value of this map range is in the top part, we need to invert this value from 0 to 1 to 1 and 0 because if we have a minimum value of 1, so the top part of the cutting, we want to have the noise of the up part. Otherwise, with the zero values, so the bottom part, we need to have the noise of the down side. And now we can add a set position in the same workflow here, link the vector offset to the set position, link this set position output of the previous set position in this new, and we can select all these nodes, move it a little bit, and now we can easily connect this output of the set position to the group output and now if I increase the up a little bit you can see the noise effect I can increase or decrease the scale the detail if I want and the offset if I need a different seed for the top part the same for the bottom I can increase you can see the scale of zero so the entire part starting to move but if I increase the scale I can have a different pattern I decrease the effort of the noise and I can increase a little bit the detail of the scale I can decrease the detail of the upper part and this could give you uh, an effect of missing ironing for your cutting now next part the holes in these cutting to have all holes here we need a stick so a cylinder that goes through the entire curtain but before this we can add the material of this curtain to separate the entire list of attributes of the curtain from the list of the attributes of the other object used in this tutorial so for the holes some new attributes like the float number of the stick width from zero stick width from zero we can add a boolean attribute to set if we want to show the stick but we will see this part next the holes in the curtain but we can create all the attributes that we need in a correct way in this modifier to see the evolution of the workflow a boolean operation if we want to have the stick centered because we could have a stick aligned at the center of the curtain or leave the stick in the space with an offset to have uh, for example a unique uh, stick from here to here using one curtain in uh, one modifier and then another curtain without a stick to have an opening effect for one uh, curtain and an opening or closing effect or other attributes to the other curtain maintaining one only stick for both of these two curtains for example and for this I added the stick centered that I move down and a new float value for the stick offset we will not want to use the stick centered feature next we need a stick radius it's obvious from zero the width is also an attribute to show the holes on the curtain because otherwise you would need to add a different object like tweezers so show holes it's a boolean vector it's a boolean attribute near the holes we could have ring of uh, material like metal for example to hide the stitches so we can have here the ring radius from zero the end ring tolerance from zero because we could have a little space between the radius of the stick and the radius of the hole in the cutting we want to have a different radius from the stick and the hole because the hole could be more bigger than the radius of the stick we can move the show holes up a little bit okay this is the initial part of the attributes so we can start with adding a cylinder a group input we can leave 32 vertices uh, for the cylinder it's not very important uh, in this case but you can export if you want in the group input we need to link the stick radius to the radius and the stick width to the of this cylinder and now if I select ctrl shift and click you can see the cylinder I set 1.5 for the width and radius or 0.025 to centimeter and half this is our stick we need to rotate this geometry in the other axis so we need to 
rotate to the Y by 90 degrees to have it in a horizontal direction. And now we need to move by the width divided by 2 this entire cylinder like the curtain because the original point of the curtain is here. So we can add a combine XYZ here, link this to the translation, link this width with a multiply by 0 0.5 and link this to the X value, H to collapse this node. Now we need another shifting on the Z axis because we don't want to have the holes here but we want to have the holes from the top of the curtain and to do this we need another attribute here. So after the offset the stick we need to add a stick height from top from zero and this is an absolute value not a relative value because I could change the entire height of the uh, curtain maintaining the same uh, distance between the top part and the height of the holes so I can duplicate this transform duplicate the group input and to get a correct uh, distance between the highest part of the curtain we need to take the height and subtract what this value of the stick height from top a little bit this will be the center point of our cylinder so i set zero for the rotation and this is the cylinder i want to shift up this i can use a combine xyz link this to the translation and link this output to the z and i shifted the cylinder to the top part of my curtain h now i can see the original curtain with the control shift and click this is the curtain this is the cylinder i can join them for a moment to see the result of this piece if i increase a little bit the height from top you can see the correct position of the cylinder now in this case for the holes feature we don't need the offset of the stick and the stick centered so we can for example multiply the width of the curtain by two to have a stick bigger than the curtain itself to be sure to cut through the curtain all the holes we need so I can link these to the depth and move this stick by these values divided by two and move it by the width itself to have a correct align in the center of the stick but keep in mind that this stick needs only to create the holes not to show the physical stick with the curtain we would have a physical uh, stick next so these need only to create the holes inside of this curtain ctrl h g to move ctrl h we can move this group output uh, the other part this is the entire layout here in this moment ctrl shift and click and now another part if i use the mesh boolean to cut what the original geometry with this stick I have a correct cutting you can see this cutting here if I press ctrl shift and click you can see all the holes inside the curtain but because we could have a ring in the external part and in the internal part of this cutting section we could need to increase the radius of the cutting holes so the radius of the stick considering this radius of the ring because we want to have the final inside part of the ring exactly to the cutting point of the holes and not only these we could need to make a more bigger hole because we need a from the radius of the stick and the radius of the hole and to make this effect I would create the profile of the rings so from this mesh boolean we need to merge by distance for security reason the entire geometry from these transform these mesh to curves but selecting only the intersecting edges of this mesh to boolean to have only the curves of these holes so in this case if i press shift ctrl and click you can see all the curtain now is a group of curves if i link these intersecting to the selection i have only the holes curves now from these i can create from curve to mesh a profile with a circle 
curb of 8 like the resolution is a good choice link these fill caps Control shift and click the radius is too high so i can get a group input another time shift out right button drag here because we want to link the ring radius to the radius of this curved circle i need to increase a little bit 2.5 millimeter for example and these are the rings Control h we can set these smoothed we can set the material of the rings and we don't have a ring material so we can add an attribute to set the material of the ring duplicate this input group input node and link these to the ring Control shift click and we can use the switch node shift alt and right drag show holes in the switch in the true value we want to have the holes and the rings of the holes otherwise we don't want any geometry so i check show holes to see them and now i want to join these mesh boolean with these rings Control shift and click and you can see the problem described before here we have the stick inside the ring we can limit the merge by distance for only the intersecting edges that we used in this mesh boolean we can select all these nodes ctrl j f2 rings and going back to the holes part from the stick radius we need to add the radius of the ring to avoid this effect of intersecting behavior between the stick and the ring on the cutting so here before setting the stick stick radius inside this cylinder we need to add what shift alt and right the drag the ring radius to the second value to increase a little bit this radius here okay and remember that we will don't use this stick as showed in this moment because it needs only for the cutting operation we will add another physical stick to be shown with the rest of the object so now i can drop the is a link to the join geometry to only see the holes and we would have uh, at the final stage uh, the stick here in the inside part of the cutting if we want to have a stick smaller than the cutting we need a tolerance and this is why we have uh, this attribute here ring tolerance so the radius of our cutting holes uh, needs to be added to this ring tolerance in other words we need to add here another adding value with this uh, ring tolerance divided by 2 so multiply apply by 0.5 and we can add this here Control h and uh, y divided by 2 because this tolerance radius is added to the rest of the radius that we have here and because the tolerance is the absolute tolerance we need to divide the tolerance for this piece and this piece of the radius so the sum of this distance and this distance have to be the tolerance value now that we have these we need to move the holes a little bit by the ring tolerance itself because i can i can't have the stick in the space and the cutting flying over the stick it's impossible in uh, our real environment so i need the touching point from this point of the stick and the point of the ring on the curtain here in the top part and i need to shift on the negative x direction the entire holes by the ring tolerance divided by two so this distance because we need to have the hole here and to do this we need to go here after the rotation of the cylinder here where we have the z shifting of the entire stick for the holes I remember you we need to subtract from this value what the value of the tolerance divided by 2 shift alt right drag but here ring tolerance to the second value but between we need to add a multiply like this and now if i increase the tolerance you can see the correct scaling of the holes if you have a problem like this you can decrease the radius of the holes so the radius of the stick like so or you can decrease the 
factor of the noise because we have a curtain a little bit shifted on the axis if you have a problem like this so uh, we don't have a correct uh, cutting uh, operation but a uh, making of these uh, strange new meshes you can easily increase your resolution for example change the fold up frequency or the offset keep in mind that you don't want this behavior so be sure to set an offset to let you cut the entire cutting fabric like this now if you have a problem like this with the extra mesh creation caused by the mesh boolean operation you can easily delete these meshes doing this before the mesh boolean we can store in the original base of the curtain so we can use a store name attribute we can store an original face boolean attribute for each face boolean checking the true value so for each face before the mesh boolean we have an original face attribute to true and after this mesh boolean where we have extra meshes we can delete these faces adding here a delete geometry node we can create a single node here link this here and we can delete all the faces that has not a checked value on this attribute so i can specify here the original face and if the attribute is false so i have a not value here because the attribute has a true for this and i want to select the not selected attribute i need to delete the faces and this is the cleaned geometry of our cutting operation so we can select all these four nodes ctrl j f2 clean extra meshes from boolean operation select ctrl shift and click to see the result of our rings now we can select all these nodes here ctrl j f2 stick for holes creation save the project and now that we have the mesh boolean operation here with the delete geometry we can add here a switch node where with the group input node here shift alt and right drag here if we want to show the holes so we need the output of this delete geometry to the true socket otherwise we don't want the mesh boolean and we don't want to delete geometry so we can add a dot here and link this to the false of this switch Control h of this we can move this a little bit we can move this dot that needs to create the holes part we can drop this line from the output of this delete geometry and link this output to the geometry node system so if i turn off the show holes we don't have the rings and the holes in the curtain we can drop this dot move this a little bit we can set smooth operation here we can set the material of our curtain and for this we can duplicate this node shift alt right drag curtain material to the material of the set material node h on the switch and this is the result i turn on the show holes boolean and we have here a problem of offset but uh, keep in mind we don't have a problem of uh, offsetting because we need to stay here or near so if i decrease for a moment uh, the resolution of uh, our curtain and hide the offset here we need to have a complete hole in this part i increase the resolution we can move this dot inside this section and move the entire section a little bit here now we have a join operation on which we need to add some other objects like the real stick and the caps of our curtain so for the real stick we can use a curve line use a different combine xyz one for the starting point and one with the shift d for the end point h h to increase the performance i turn off the show holes i add a group input here because we need the stick width multiply by 0.5 
to get the correct x point x value of the starting point of the curve line so if i press shift ctrl and click you can see these i need to multiply this value by minus one because i want to have the opposite point here to the negative x value on the x axis ctrl h and on this line i want to create a profile so I can convert the curve to mesh using a circle curve linking this to the profile and with a duplicated node of the group input shift alt right drag here because we need to link this thick radius the real radius to the radius of this uh, circle and this is the real stick that we need select all these nodes ctrl j to stick now we can add a join geometry to make a union between this stick and the caps so the caps are the icosphere for example we can instance on point this icosphere where on these two points of this primitive curve line of the stick so i can export this curve point to these points here link these instances in the join geometry to see the icosphere the radius is too much we can increase the subdivision add a group input node because we need here in the group inputs near the radius the caps radius from zero and we can link shift alt right drag the caps radius to the radius of this icosphere ctrl h we can increase the caps radius to 0.0 to 5 for example or maybe a bit more 3 select all these nodes ctrl j f2 caps now we need two support for this uh, stick and for the supports we need other attributes so below the caps we can add other five attributes the support radius from zero the support depth so the distance between the stick and the wall for example and the support distance from zero that is the distance the absolute distance from the center of the stick to the point of the support on the stick you could also use a not an absolute value from the center of the stick but you can use a value from the end of the width of the stick if you want to maintain the distance between the gaps and the supports so for the support i will use a cylinder a group input node and the support will be composed by three pieces one is a cylinder on the wall a cylinder that goes from the wall to the stick and a sphere to hold the stick so we can start with the base shift alt and right drag the support radius to the radius of the cylinder as the depth we can use 0.0 0 0.05 centimeter to be realistic and it's better adding a value like this to have the ability to be able to reuse this value in other circumstances now if i press shift ctrl and click you can see nothing because we don't have a radius here so i set 0 2.5 centimeter for example and we need to transform the geometry from this position because we have the wall here so we need to move this piece a little bit by this depth divided by 2 so i need to multiply this by 0 0.5 use it in a combine x y z linking this value to the z axis and link this to the translation because here we have the wall then we have the initial piece of the support then the cylinder and then the sphere but since we need to attach to create an instance of the support in the two points of the stick we need to have the end part of the support here in the origin point of the coordinate system and not the base of the support because we need to instantiate the entire object on the stick so we need to add from this multiply node we need to add shift add the right drag the support depth to the second parameter and link these to the z but before this we need to change the sign to minus one because we need to shift to the bottom direction so if now i increase the support depth to 0.1 meter you can see these the wall will stay 
in this direction, okay, in this plane, then we will have the base, then the cylinder, and here the icosphere to let us uh, instantiate the entire object from this origin point on the points on the stick. I can move these nodes a little bit, select all these nodes, Ctrl J F2, support base part. Next we need the support middle part, so uh, a cylinder another time, another time the group input, because we need to link shift alt right drag the support divided by two, so I need a math operation to have a different value from the radius of the base and divided by two the radius of the cylinder in between. Shift alt right drag on the cylinder, we need the depth in the depth of the cylinder shift alt and click you can see the cylinder the radius is wrong because we need to multiply these now it's correct and now we need to transform the geometry again with a combine xyz link this to the translation and we want to move this z by the support depth divided by 2 so i can link this depth with a multiplication by 0.5 and link this to the z but keep in mind the idea described before, we don't want to move on the positive Z axis but a negative Z axis. Ctrl H, G to move, H, select all these nodes, Ctrl J, F2, support middle part. Now the end part of this object, we can use an icosphere with a, a subdivision of 3, for example. We can add a group input, Shift Alt right drag and we can set the support radius to the radius of the icosphere, Ctrl H, select all these nodes, Ctrl J, F2, support and part, we can join these three objects together and this is the entire support with the origin point here. Now that we have these, we need to rotate the entire object on the x-axis because we want to have the support in a, an horizontal direction, so we can link these to a transform geometry and rotate by 90 degrees like this. Now that we have the entire support, we can select on these nodes, Ctrl J, F2, entire support support but we can add a little attribute here a boolean attribute to have a support in a direction not in a horizontal axis but in a positive z direction because i could have a support starting from the ceiling and not from the wall so to do this we need to add a boolean attribute here we can add a switch operation with a group input shift alt right drag we can use the support up to the switch, Control H to this group, and if we have the false attribute, the attribute with a false value, we can link this geometry. Otherwise, we need this geometry in a transform geometry another time, with another rotation of 90 degrees on the x-axis, and link this to the true. We can add this to the section H, we can include all these nodes here, Control Shift and click, and this is the entire support and the rotation. Now the support is finished, and we can create an instance on point, because we want to instance this support on the line, on the points of the stick, we can link this as the object, as the instance, we can add a group input here, another curve line to simulate the sticks before, link this to the points, but uh, this time we need to use not uh, the width of the stick, we need to use the support distance instead of using the stick width to get the correct distance from the middle of the stick to instantiate uh, this support H, H, remember that we need to use the X component of this combine XYZ and now we need to link in a math operation in a multiply by 0.5 okay shift alt right drag here the support distance to the first value control H link this to the X to get the first instance point because we have no distance I can set the here one meter for example and this is the first support the next support is the same but multiplying this value by minus one because I want to instance the second point on the next negative x direction and these are the two support select all these nodes ctrl j f2 support instances now that we have these we can join this result
Alt together with the caps and the stick itself. So we can press Alt, right drag from these to these to add the supports on the join geometry. We can set the smooth to the entire piece. Control Shift click to see the result of the entire stick and the support. We can set the material of the stick. Do we have the material of the stick? No. So we can add here after the support up the material of the stick add a group input shift alt right drag the stick and the material ctrl h select all these nodes ctrl j f to assign material ctrl shift click to see the result of this output now we can use the previous stick centered and stick offset attributes that we added before to place this entire stick on the curtain to do this we need another group input we need a transform geometry because we need to move this entire piece on the curtain we need a combine xyz h to collapse link this to the translation and we need to add a switch because we have the boolean operation here the stick centered and we can link shift alt right drag the stick centered in the switch select here the four float i don't know why blender loses the connection of the switch because uh, this doesn't change so press another time shift alt the right drag from these two nodes stick centered in the switch link this to the x component because we need to move in this direction the entire stick and if we want to move the object in a custom way so with the stick centered falls we need this stick offset to start with a correct position we need to move the entire object by the stick width multiply by 0.5 ctrl shift click you can see nothing because we need to, to link the geometry inside this uh, transform geometry and then add the offset to these operations so we can add with a mathematical operation shift alt right drag the stick offset in the value here and link this to the false so in this way i can move the stick where i want otherwise if i turn on the stick centered we need to move the stick based by the width of the entire curtain multiply by 0.5 so divided by 2 to have the correct alignment in the center of the curtain press h ctrl h here this is the layout and then we need to transform the geometry another time to move this object along the z axis by what by the height of the curtain subtracting what the position of the stick so shift alt right drag stick height from top because we move the stick from the top of the curtain in a lower height and this is the shifting on the z axis press h ctrl h on this node select all these nodes ctrl j f2 move stick caps and support to the right position as the final step we can add a switch to use this show stick here so we can use a switch node here with a geometry selection add a group input another time shift alt right drag the show stick to the switch ctrl h and if we want to show the stick we need to link this geometry otherwise we want no geometry now we can link this result to the main join geometry node here move this a little bit we can move the entire part of the creation of the stick and the support and the caps a little bit to the left now we can press shift ctrl left click to see the join geometry node and now if i turn the show stick on you can see the support i can increase the distance a little bit i can decrease the stick width a little bit and this is the result and now if i check this support up you can see the correct support on the z axis and what i described before if i turn off the stick centered i can use this offset to create an effect like this i can increase the stick width as two meters for example I support distance to 1.8 meters and i can use this technique to create more than one curtain on the 
same stick otherwise I can leave the support distance to 1 the stick width to 1.2 for example and leave the stick centered to the curtain and this is very useful when you are using this technique for little curtains on a window for example now we can show the holes and you can see the effect of the tolerance now if I zoom in here you can see if I set a ring radius a tolerance of 0 you can see the perfect radius of of the stick is equal to the radius of the cutting effect in the curtain but if I want to add a little tolerance 1.5 centimeter you can see this effect maintaining the upper touching point between the stick and the ring and if I increase the ring radius multiplying it by 2 you can see the same effect because we added to the radius of the cutting operation also the radius of the ring itself to maintain the correct touching point here now I decrease this a little bit now we need to move all these object by the support depth itself because we want to maintain the wall as it stay uh, where it stays and move the cutting depending on the support depth that we set in the geometry modifier if I press 3 you can see these result now we need to move these and entire joint geometry with a transform geometry and a combine at yz link these to the translation we need to move to the negative y direction by what we can use a group input another time press shift alt right drag and we need to use the support depth to the y information but before this link these to a multiply value by minus one because we want to shift to the negative y Y direction and link this to the Y socket. Press H, drop this link, Ctrl H to this group, group input, select all these nodes, Ctrl J F2, move all from the wall, Ctrl Shift and click and this is the final result. So now if I increase the support depth by 0.5 you can see the curtain is moved from the wall. Now the last part, if we want to have a rope tied on the curtain, if I I set the 0.5 and 0.5 for the opening factor so this is the factor that I want I would like to add a rope here to make a fake effect of the binding from the rope on the cutting and to do this we can start with the idea of a circle here next we will use a geometry proximity node to move the position of the points on this curve on this surface and then we will add a clip in whatever position on the curve we want so again we need other attributes here so we need a boolean show rope a new float attribute rope resolution from 3 default 10 for example a rope radius from 0 0 I turn off for performance reason the show holes the rope height that is the height of the rope from the bottom part of the cutting in this way we can can uh, set uh, a detailed or specific position of the rope in the space and this is uh, an absolute value not a relative value the rope profile radius from 0 the rope rotation from 0 to 1 because you know that uh, if I have a rope here it's difficult to have a rope perfectly aligned in a horizontal direction because in the real space you have the stitching part the stretching uh, effect that could change the stretching strength on the rope from the curtain itself we can add a material for the rope and for the clip we can add an object that we can select from our outliner so this is the clip and next we are going to add other two attributes for the clipping and one other float value to define the clip offset on the curve for the positioning from 0 to 1 0 is the starting point of the curve and one is the final point on the curve like a follow path constraint and a clip rotation to let us rotate on the normal direction on the curve the clip itself if we want to rotate the clip always from 0 to 1 so 0 is 0 and 1 is the entire round of 360 degrees now that we have all these new attributes we can add a group in 
input here, we can add a circle curve to define the rope. We can link shift alt and right drag the resolution of the rope in the resolution. Shift alt right drag we can link the rope radius to the radius of this curve circle. Now we need to use two transform geometry. One is for the rotation on the y-axis, so to have a rotation like this. And then we will use another transform geometry to move it on the x-axis and on the z-axis to align this circle on this piece and in the position on the z-axis that we need. We can link this to this and and because we know that uh, we have the rope rotation, we can limit the rotation from 0 to 1 to 0 and 90 degrees. It's difficult to have a rope rotated by over 90 degrees. So we can add a map range component, a combine XYZ to link the rotation for the first transformer geometry. Shift Alt right drag the rope rotation to the value of this map range. It goes from 0 to 1 to 0 and 90 degrees. So we are talking about radians here because we are using a combine XYZ and not degrees because if I directly use this socket I can use degrees otherwise I need to use radians. So we can set here pi divided by 2 so 90 degrees. Link this to the Y axis because we need to rotate by this axis here. H this is the rotation. Another combine XYZ to the translation on the x and the z axis and here we can move the circle on the x axis by the row radius multiplied by 0.5 so divided by 2 link these to the x and these y because uh, we could have uh, a row here for example and not here now if i press shift ctrl and click you can see the circle if i increase the rope resolution to 60 rope radius 0.05 meter height 1 meter for example rope profile radius sorry rope radius 1 meter for example and rope profile radius 0.005 rope rotation 0 and this is the result and we need to move this circle on the z axis by what by this rope height value so I to better understand the rope height attribute we can use it as a factor on the z and not using with an absolute value so in, in this way we can use a value from 0 to 1 and we can multiply what this factor so the rope z factor in this second socket with the height of the curtain to get a relative height in the space based by a factor from 0 to 1 so 0 will be 0 and 1 will be the entire height of the curtain. Next we can link this to the z and now if I set the same value of the opening z factor 0.5 I should have the position of the circle at the same point of the starting point of the opening effect. Ctrl H here. The rope resolution I forgot is the, uh, an integer number. The color was wrong. 10 from 3. Now I reset the resolution to 16 for example and this is the layout now we can link this output of the curve directly in the main geometry join geometry output to see the result i drop this viewer for a moment and you, you can see the curtain and the curve now we need to shift the points of the curve on the surface of the curtain and we can use the geometry proximity node where we want to use the mesh of the curtain here not used in the mesh boolean so before the mesh boolean we don't care for this link this to the geometry proximity because from this we need to get the correct position of each point of the curve on the curtain and for this we need to set the position of this geometry and link the result position on the curtain in the position socket of this node i create a dot here to see the result and if I link the geometry of the curve here in this dot you can see the correct shifting of all the points but because we have here the rope profile radius we need to offset each point of this curve on this surface a little bit upside 
the surface itself. And to do this, we need to calculate the vector from the original position of the each point on the curve and the destination point. So remember, if we have vectors, we need to subtract from this vector the vector of the destination point to get the direction where the point was moved and we need to use this direction to offset uh, this point. We could use uh, a mixing from the original position and the destination position. It's the same. We don't mind. For this tutorial I decided to use the, the subtracting mathematical operation between this vector and this vector to get the same result. And to do this we need to capture from the original curve geometry for each point the vector of the position subtract from the is what the position we found thanks to the geometry proximity node to get the correct vector direction and sign. Next we need to normalize this vector and now we can scale this offset by the rope profile radius itself. So we need to add a group input node another time, shift alt right drag and link the rope profile radius to the scale of this scale node H, control H and now we need another set position position to offset each point by this offset. I hide the annotation for a moment and now you can see if I link this set position to the final geometry you can see a little offset from the mesh caused by this rope prev profile radius. If I increase this you can see more offset from the surface. Now I can reset to 0.005. Now we can convert this curve in, from a, a poly to a busier curve, adding a set spline type curve, set this to busier, add a set handle type, have a smoothed curvature, link this to the same output. Now we can convert this curve to a mesh using a circle curve, link this here, fill caps, and using the rope profile radius for the radius of our circle. And as described in uh, my previous uh, tutorials uh, and other tutorials uh, on the web, we can add a spline parameter to get the factor of both of these uh, curves to get the, the two components, the U and the V component of the UV map of the row to create uh, these. And if you don't know how to create a UV map uh, in a correct way, I suggest you to watch the, my previous video here or in the link in the description. And now I can duplicate this capture attribute with the factor for each of these curves, create a combine XYZ and link the X, the Y, create a new output attribute in the group output, call it UV map rope and giving it a value of UV map rope here in the output attributes part. Now we can link this attribute to the group output and now if I increase the rope rotation you can see the rotation of the rope, I can increase or decrease the number of resolution to have a more realistic uh, rope around the curtain and next uh, after this uh, curve to mesh uh, can set the material adding a group input node and link with the shift alt right drag the rope material to the material control h and next uh, with a switch node we can decide if we want to maintain this geometry or not thanks to this show rope boolean attribute so we can press shift alt right drag show rope in the switch and if we want to maintain the geometry link this geometry to the true otherwise we don't want any geometry. Link this output to this output, drop this dot, move this entire join geometry here a little bit, H to collapse this switch node and this is the rope so I can select all these nodes, Control J, F2, rope. Last part of the modeling section is the clip so I show the rope for a moment, I add a clip like um, Suzanne for example, Control 2 to have a little smooth shade 
smooth I scale it a little bit I want to rotate to the X by 90 degrees to have the Z component here because we want to use the Z axis as the normal of the curve on the carting to have a, a good following path for Suzanne and now we can use Suzanne as our object for the clipping and now for the clipping offset we have this factor from 0 to 1 and it's the same approach of this factor parameter from the spline parameter so thanks to this factor we can get the correct position on the curve where we want to attach the clip and to do this we need a sample curve and this node let us to have the correct position tangent and normal from a value of the factor inside a curve so the curve that we need is this the curve of the rope so we can link this curve after the capturing of the factor for example here we can add a group input to link with the shift alt and right drag the clip offset to the factor of this sample curve to get the correct position of the tangent and normal of these points now we can add an object info because we need to link what shift alt right drag we need to link the clip on the object of our objects info next because we have the rope profile radius set here we need to transform this geometry moving it from its location to a value equal to the rope profile profile radius so in this case I take Suzanne apply scale apply location and apply rotation and tab to enter in edit mode we need to shift on the Z axis a little bit to have the correct point on the Z axis here in the origin point because we want to use this point as the point of the entire mesh that we want to move here on the curve next we need to move on the Z axis a little bit by the rope profile radius shift alt right drag rope profile radius because we don't want to make a collision and an overlapping of these meshes so the rope and the Susanna clip H control H now we need to set the position of this clip but instead of leaving this object as a mesh with uh, all the points because here we have a set position that is based by the points of the vertices of the mesh that we link here we need to set the entire mesh as a unique instance and now if I set the position I set the position of the entire object as one object now I can link the position of the sample curve here to the set position to move the clip on the curve now if I link this output to the entire geometry you can see Suzanne here and if I increase the factor you can see correct positioning on the curve of Suzanne but there is a problem the problem is the rotation of the Suzanne we need to adjust the rotation of Suzanne because we want to follow always the normal on the horizontal plane for this curve and to do this we need a rotate instances because this is an instance by what here we have the tangent the tangent follows this curve so for this reason we can align the X of the Suzanne with this tangent for the first align to Euler to vector tool so we want to align the x-axis of Suzanne along the tangent the x-axis of the Suzanne where along the tangent so we need to link the tangent to the vector where we want to align Suzanne next we want to rotate the y-axis of the Suzanne okay on her head we want to rotate this axis and, and we want to maintain this axis along the Z coordinate system, the Z axis of the 3D space. 
maintaining as much as possible the x axis and to do this we need another align euler to vector where we want to rotate this object and better understand this i link this result here we need to rotate the y axis the y axis of the original susan along what direction the z direction okay so we want to rotate this axis up for all these points maintaining what as much as possible the x axis because before we rotated the x axis along the tangent of the curve and in this way if i hide for a moment this annotation and move the offset you can see the clip follows the curve maintaining the tangent curvature and where it is possible the other axis following the z axis okay following the direction and next we can use another clip rotation to rotate Euler this object by a local rotation by what by the group input attribute that we have here the clip rotation so to do this we need a combine XYZ because we want to uh, rotate only on the Z axis you can see the Z axis is here now because the original Z axis of the Suzanne is this its point of view and now we have the Z axis here from here to here okay in this direction and we want to rotate along this axis so we need to link this to the rotate by and shift alt right drag the clip rotation to the z value of this combine xyz ctrl h link this to the rotation and keep in mind here in between we need a map range because we have an attribute from 0 to 1 but we know that the we can use 0 for 0 degrees and 1 for an entire round so to multiply by pi radians so i can link this clip rotation to a map range and transform the range from 0 to 1 to a range from 0 and to multiply pi so the entire round now if i increase this value i can rotate if i want 0 0.5 i invert the <laughs> entire rotation of suzanne and if i set to 1 i have an entire round and this was the clip select all these nodes ctrl j f2 clip another little piece if we want to have or not the clip we can add here a boolean operation to show clip use a switch node with a group input another time shift alt right drag the show clip boolean switch ctrl h and if we want suzanne the clip link this to the true otherwise we don't want any of geometry link this output here to the main join geometry drop this dot h and here we have all the modeling done and we can go to the material section so in this case the entire list of parameters that can define the curtain modeling is finished we can hide suzanne go here in the preview material we can create multiple material like curtain one for the stick one for the rope one for the rings and one for the clip now we need to go here in the geometry node and link the material that we need stick ring rope and for the clip i'm sorry we can select the suzanne and set the clip material for suzanne so if we want a gold metallic suzanne we can go here set this to yellow and decrease a little bit the roughness and this is suzanne next we can go to the rings that is very very easy we want to have the holes for the rings we can select these make it metallic with a high value of roughness go in the shading editor we need to make the material of the curtain so select the curtain from the slot and here we have the uv map the original uv map so we can add an attribute uv map and if i add a checker texture for example and link the vector here color here you can see the 
perfect distribution of this UV map, even if it has stretched. And this is very beautiful to see because you can set whatever parameter you want. Keep in mind that the radius of the curve, the rope is wrong in this moment. I'm using the opening X vector, but the stretching of the cutting is perfect. Even if I multiply by three the up frequency, see the correct UV map. Next, we have the sticker and we can link a dark brown color to simulate a piece of wood with a little saturation like this, a height roughness and so on. And for the rope, like before, we can add an attribute to get the UV map rope. Keep in mind the case sensitive naming. If I separate this vector to XYZ, I can see the X starting from here and go from 0 to 1 from the last, the other part. The Y section from 0 and around to 1. And I can use this vector in a noise simple texture link this to the base color and increase the scale if you want to increase the scale and if you want a mapped vector node here you can easily play with the scale of the x to adjust the texture coordinate system along the rope as you want and this is the final result of our tutorial i can add some noise here and noise down increase a little bit the scale I can decrease a little bit the rope resolution if I want I can decrease a little bit the resolution if I want and if you have a problem like these for example you can increase the resolution a little bit or you can add a custom offset over the rope profile radius to scale more the offset between the destination point of the curve on the curtain and the original position of the point on the original curve and this is easy because you can easily go here in the scale and add on the rope profile radius here in between another value that you need and this was the tutorial thank you guys for watching this video i hope you learned something from it there's lots of information and if you like what i'm doing please subscribe to my channel give a like if you like it leave a comment if you want to have some information i'm here for you you can download this project from my gamrod page or make it from scratch and see you to the next tutorial bye